Okay, guys and girls, my name's Andy and I run Cracking Media. Today, I'm bringing to you the top five most common mistakes I see from people recording audiobooks or voiceovers at home. So watch through this. Make sure you don't fall for any of these because these will kill your audiobooks and nobody wants to record an eight-hour audiobook to then have to do it again. So... Number one, microphone positioning. It seems simple and fundamental, but it's very easy to overlook, very easy to forget, and it is something you don't want to do. Your microphone should be approximately six to eight inches from your mouth. So first off, check your microphone, find out if it is a side address microphone like this one, i.e. you have to talk into the side of it, or an end address microphone where you have to talk into the end. This is a side address microphone, so you want to position it about six to 10 inches away from your mouth, which if you do that with your hand, is a really good indicator. That is the right distance away from the microphone. You then want to make sure you're do doing something about plosives. Plosives are when a puff of air from your mouth hits the mic and it makes a horrible distorted sound like this. Yeah. So, to avoid plosives, what you want to do is visualize where the air is moving. Plosives is the, the puff of air from the P sound. Now you can actually feel this yourself. So if you hold up your hand in front of your mouth and say, Peter Pepper picked a pot of pickled peppers, you'll actually be able to feel the air hitting your hands. Now every time that air hits this mic, <laughs> now every time that air hits this mic, your listeners ears start bleeding. So do not do that. To avoid that happening, you can do one of two things. One, use a pop filter, which gets positioned between you and the microphone, about halfway between. If it's too close to the mic, it won't do anything. If it's too close to you, it, you, you can't see your script and it also won't do anything. It's about halfway in between. The other way of doing it, if you don't have a pop filter, and arguably the better way to do it, is to position the mic slightly off center. So, hold your hand up and say, Peter Pepper picked a pot of pickled peppers, and you'll be able to feel it. But if you move your hand slightly to one side, Peter Pepper picked a pot of pickled peppers, your mic can still hear you perfectly, but the air from your mouth is going past it. So, to avoid the plosives, take your mic, just move it offside slightly. Peter Pepper picked a pot of pickled peppers, and it will, any air coming out your mouth will go past it. Problem solved, happy days. Okay, tip number two is to check in with your audio guy. If you're going to be recording yourself and then getting someone like me to prepare all the files for ACX, do your uh, editing, mastering, etc., record a sample, send it to the guy you're thinking about hiring first, or find that guy first, and get them to check. Because there might be something in there that's very easy to address at the beginning that you can deal with right away, rather than recording all the way through your audiobook to find out there's something minorly off at the end that you then have to go back and redo. If you just record a sample, send it to a guy, get him to check it, you can find out straight away whether you're on point or whether there's something that you need to do to make sure that the audio you record is up to the standard that you want. Because remember, once you've recorded this, the quality of the audio you send out is a representation of you. It's gonna have your name on it. And so it's very important that it is really top quality. Okay, tip number three is file management. Make sure that you don't record your whole audiobook into one file and make sure you have backups. So the workflow I use when I'm recording audiobooks is I record each file, uh, each chapter rather, to one file. So I have a file for chapter one, a file for chapter two, and a file for chapter three. And I, inside my audiobook project, I have three folders. So I'll have a folder on my PC that's titled My Audiobook, and inside there will be three folders. There'll be one called raw, one called working, and one called ready or final. And what I do immediately after I finish recording is back up and make a copy of the file. I record my raw file, chapter one, into the raw folder, and then as soon as I'm finished, I copy it into the working folder. Now, any further work I do, or if you're doing it and sending it off to someone to have it done, you send that file off, and then you always have the raw backup. The raw backup, you don't touch, don't do anything to, and then it doesn't matter what happens, you always have a backup file, and if you accidentally do something to screw it up, it's not the end of the world, because you still have the original that you can go back to. Okay, bonus tip. So this is tip 3.5, or common mistake 3.5 that I find all the damn time. Make sure you are recording to what is called an uncompressed file format. <laughs> so now you're asking what is a compressed file format and how the hell do I avoid that and why do I need to bother? So uh, common t the two most common file types you'll find are MP3, which everyone's heard of, and a WAV or a WAV file. 
Now what happens when you record raw audio is there's a lot of detail in that, a lot of things just outside of the human hearing range that you might not be able to hear, and all of that is recorded. And all that information is there in the file, which is wonderful for post-processing and mastering and that sort of thing. You then have what are called compressed file types, which are, for example, like MP3. Now, you might not necessarily be able to hear the difference initially, but an MP3 file is much, much, much smaller. And all that detail that's in the, the, the audio guy will need for mastering isn't in the MP3 file because it's been stripped out. It's been stripped down to its bare basic necessities. Now, if you imagine the audio guy or if you're doing your own, you come in and you want to increase the volume a lot, the WAV file is going to have the information in it to be able to amplify the sound and increase the volume of a bit that was qu recorded quietly and have all the quality come with it so that you're able to amplify the sound a little bit and it still sounds really good. Whereas if you have a compressed file format, you're not able to do that so much because it stripped all that data out. Okay, tip number four is breathe. For the love of God, breathe. It is okay to breathe. The biggest thing you need to think about from a performance aspect when reading an audiobook or recording an audiobook is to relax and breathe. And it's okay to take a little bit of time to breathe. In fact, you'll probably find, even if it's energetic, everything will sound a lot more natural if you just take the time to breathe normally. A trap everyone falls into is they end up with a lot of slash breaths, which is where they talk like this and <gasps> they've got to breathe in quickly because they've got to get on with their sentence and it starts sounding really unnatural. It's okay. Take your time. Breathe. It will be a much more relaxed, much more natural experience for the end user, for your listener, and everything will be so much nicer. Okay, tip number five is make sure you're recording in an appropriate place. Any extraneous noise, so outside noise, that just means outside of your recording that you don't want, uh, which can be things like traffic, heating, fans, a fridge is a common one. If you've got a fridge in the next room, uh, it clicks on when you're not expecting it, and then all of a sudden you have a brrrr in the back of your recording. Make sure you're in a quiet environment and make sure that your environment is relatively sound treated. Now, you don't need to go and hire a studio. You can do it at home. You can build a pillow fort. You can hide under your duvet. Sometimes you can even get a decent recording out of a car because they're so nicely <laughs> treated. Um, wardrobes, closets, they're also great. You just hang a mic in between your clothes. Um, but whatever you do, make sure that you record in a appropriate place, even if that place is improvised. And if you want to see why this is so important, check out this video here that I did explaining why reverb absolutely murders home recordings far more than it should, and how you can, with just the stuff you have around your home, make professional sound recordings that are reverb-free. Head over there, and I'll see you there.